come right in. Oh, George, we've got company, and they're all in uniform. This is Bill Goodwin, inviting all you servicemen and women to enjoy another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our tenor Jimmy Cash, and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, George and Gracie have just arrived in New York on their bond tour, and we find them now waiting for a cab at Grand Central Station. Oh, my, it's grand to be in New York again. Wonderful, wonderful New York. No wonder they call it the city of brotherly love. You're thinking of Philadelphia. Oh. No wonder they call it the Eternal City. That's Rome. The Windy City? Chicago. The Motor City? Detroit. Wonderful, wonderful New York. No wonder they call it New York City. Now you're playing it safe. Uh, I was born here, you know. You were, dear? Sure. I was born over on the east side. Pitt Street. Pitt Street. Yeah. 1842. 1842. What month? 1842 Pitt Street. Oh. Good night. I couldn't have been born in 1842. Oh, of course not. That's before Lincoln became president. <laughs> well, come on. Let's grab a cab and find a place to stay. You know, Gracie, I'd... I'd feel safer if you'd let me wire ahead for hotel reservations. Oh, don't be such a worrier, George. We'll have no trouble finding a place to stay in New York. And I know they have plenty of room in Brooklyn. Come on, Gracie, let's get a room. Well, it's now uh, five hours and 76 hotels later, and George and Gracie are still looking. But, Clark, the man ahead of us got a room. He had a reservation. You see, Gracie, we should have wired for one yesterday. Yesterday, when he made his, people were only smoking their cigarettes halfway down. <laughs> well, hiya, Burns. Oh, hello, hello Bill. Oh, hello, Goodwin. You know where we can get a hotel room? Are you kidding? George, you won't find a room in this town if you live to be a hundred, which gives you about two months to look around. <laughs> <laughs> Funny man. Uh, how did you get a room here? Well, I didn't, George. I'm staying with an aunt. I'm just here to see an old pal of mine, Francho Tone. Francho Tone? The movie star? Yeah. Does he stay here? Yes, we were out together last night. Went dancing at Roseland. <laughs> well, Bill, isn't he a little tall for you to dance with? <laughs> Gracie, we had dates. Oh, Bill, what sort of a fellow is Franchitone? Oh, he's suave, sophisticated, handsome, and the devil with the women. <laughs> Gee, they... they... <laughs> he's cute. They simply can't resist him. Oh. In other words, he's George's type. <laughs> Silly sometimes, don't I? <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, Bill. Yes. There's Tone getting off the elevator right now. Yeah, where? Oh, oh, yes. Say, he is fascinating. That man of the world type that women like. He is, huh? Yes. And look at those young, firm bags under his eyes. <laughs> Hey, look, he's got a suitcase with him. It looks like he's checking out. Well, grab his room for us. Well, you wait here, kids. I'll talk to him. Hey, Francho, where are you going? Oh, hello, Bill. <laughs> Franch, you checking out? Oh, just going to Chicago for a couple of days. Say, Bill, where did those girls come from that we were out with last night? <laughs> oh, you mean Ingrid and Greta? Yeah. <laughs> Ingrid and Greta Bugelmeyer. 
Very, very high-class girls, Francho. I had plenty of trouble getting them. They only go out with celebrities, and that left one of us in a pretty embarrassing spot. Well, so long, Bill. I gotta run. Oh, wait, Francho. How about a couple of friends of mine using your room while you're gone? Gee, I'm sorry. I've already loaned it to a fellow. I'll see you later, Bill. Okay. So long, Francho. Well, how about it, Bill? Did you get Francho Tone's room for us? Well, no, Gracie. A friend of his has already moved in. It's too bad, too. It's one of the nicest rooms in the hotel. 516. 516, huh? Well, thanks for trying, Bill. I'll see you later. Bye, Gracie. Uh, George, get our bags and bring them up to room 516. Have we, uh, have we got it? We'll have it. Is this the room Franchotone just left? Yes. Well, I'm a nurse from the Board of Health. Take off your clothes. What? We have to burn them. This room is contaminated. Mr. Tone just collapsed in the lobby with a very contagious disease. What disease? Uh, what disease? Yeah. Uh, double frizzola of the throat. Uh, frizzola? Uh, and you think I might get it? You may already have it. Stick out your tongue. Ah. Uh, now turn it over. I can't. Frizzola. Look, lady, I never heard of Frizzola. Well, here I am, Gracie. Is this the room? Uh, 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 yes, yes. Uh, b- put everything inside. Okay, I'll put the stuff in this bedroom. Who's that? Uh, th- that? Um, why, he's the only living man who ever recovered from Frizzola. Holy smoke. Does it leave you looking like that? Yes. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Uh, who was that? Uh, uh, that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the only living man who ever recovered from Frizzola. <laughs> Jimmy Cash, our young tenor, sings for you the romantic ballad, Where Are You? James? Where are you? me I thought you cared about me where are you where's my heart where is the dream we started I can't believe we're parted where are you when we said goodbye love What had we to gain When I gave you my love Was it all in vain All life through Must I go on pretending Where is my happy ending We're going to spend the night in French or Tone's apartment. Stop moaning around and help me finish unpacking. Here, stick those handkerchiefs in the dresser drawer. All right. My goodness, Mr. Tone left some things behind. <laughs> what's, uh, what's funny? He wears pink ones. <laughs> Come on, honey. I'm, I'm tired. I want to get to bed. Well, I'm almost ready for bed, dear. Are my cosmetics in this bag? I don't know. Unpack it and find out. Oh, let's see now. Cold cream, vanishing cream, cleansing cream, night cream, chin strap and girdle. George, where'd you put my stuff? It's in the other bag, I guess. <gasps> oh, gee. Francho Tone's apartment. Mm, well, come on. Come to bed, Grace. All right, dear. Uh, did you notice this leather-bound book on the nightstand beside the bed? No. Oh, I'll bet it's a book of poems that Francis Tone reads every night before he drops off. I'll read one. 
Okay, read it and let's go to sleep. Oh, now, here's one that starts, Gertie, Plaza 59970. <laughs> well, George, that doesn't rhyme, does it? Gracie, if you don't stop snooping around and talking so much about French Tone, you'll dream about him tonight. Oh, well, I should dream about French Tone when I'm married to George Burns. Believe me, you've got plenty that he hasn't got. Okay, go to sleep. I can't now. I'll be awake all night trying to think what it is. Gracie, turn out the light and go to sleep. Yes, dear. Imagine me dreaming about Franchitone. Oh, what a silly idea. The only man I could ever dream about is my husband, George Tone. I mean, <laughs> Francho Burns. Oh, good idea. Ah, good morning, my darling wife. Is breakfast ready? Why, yes. Yes, it is, George. Why are you staring at me, Gracie? Well, you, you look so cute this morning. I do? Oh, yes. In fact, better than you did when I married you. Well, here's a nice big kiss for you, darling. Do that again, George. All right. You are George, aren't you? Of course, precious. To prove it, here's another great big kiss. George, do you have any identification on you? Why, what's come over you, Gracie? You've never been this way before. Oh, neither have you. Well, I'll have to be running the office, sweetheart. Give me a big hug. Oh, George, don't squeeze me so tight. George, oh, you're so strong. George, George! George, George! Huh? What? What's, what's the matter, Gracie? Oh, George, I just had a dream. Turn on the light. I want to look at you. Okay. Huh? Turn it off there. Go back to sleep, Gracie. Oh, well, now that's funny. I could have sworn that George looked like Francho Tone. Oh, I guess I'm just overtired. Oh. Yoo hoo, Gracie. I'm home. Oh, George, you're early tonight. Dinner isn't ready. Oh, that's all right, baby. <laughs> By the way, you know that new hat you've been wanting? Yes. I bought it for you today. And that reminds me, here's the check for last week's radio program. You keep it all. Me? Keep it all? Sure. And here's a kiss to seal the bargain. <laughs> well, why, why do you look so puzzled? I still say something new has been added. Well, aren't you happy? Happy? I'm delirious. <laughs> Gracie. 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 Please tell me why you're sitting up in bed laughing in the middle of the night. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, dear. It's that dream again. I, I keep having dreams in which you look like Francho Tone. It's terrible. It is, huh? Yeah, they're so short. Go to sleep, dear. Oh, yes, dear. Well, Gracie, I've got a surprise for you. You have, George? Yeah. Francho Tone is on his way over here. Oh, oh but George, he's a terrible wolf. Are you kidding? <laughs> Francho Tone a wolf? Why, he's almost as old as I am. But I tell you, dear, he's a handsome, sophisticated wolf. Huh. In his condition, he couldn't catch Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> well, I I'll get it, George. Mrs. Burns? Yes? I'm Francho, too. You? You're the handsome, sophisticated wolf? I am. You must have spent the night in the trap. Come here, baby. 
How would you like to get in pictures? Mr. Toad. Just call me Francie. Come here, baby. Oh, please, please. I'm happily married to George Burns. George Burns? That broken down excuse for a man? Come here, baby. No, no. Francho Tone, what are you doing with my wife? Just saying hello, Hollywood style. Get out of my house, you cad. Get out. I should have known better than to leave you alone. Whoa. Oh, George, what a horrible experience that was. He made advances. Well, don't even talk about it, darling. I'll take you in my arms and hug your fears away. Oh, George. You're so sweet. Oh, George. So beautiful. Oh, George. So, so precious. Oh, George. Oh, George. Oh, George. Oh, George. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's, what's, what's the matter? Oh, George. <laughs> I was dreaming about Francho Tune again. I told you you shouldn't have eaten that lobster at Lindy's. Well, do you think that's what's making me dream about Francho Tone, the lobster? Sure. Now go to sleep. George. What? Do you think Lindy's would deliver at this time of night? Oh, good night. <laughs> Time now for Felix Mills and his orchestra. It's the always popular The Girlfriend. sleep a wink last night. Oh! 
you've hardly touched your breakfast. Oh, I can't eat, dear. I'm worried. Imagine dreaming all night about Francho Tone. Well, it's nothing to worry about. It's very simple. You sleep in Francho Tone's bed, so you dreamed about him. Well, that doesn't explain it. Why not? Oh, well, I slept in a Murphy bed, but I didn't dream about George Murphy. <laughs> That's silly. I took a nap on a Morris chair, but I didn't dream about Chester Morris. All right, all right. And I once slept in front of a stove, but I didn't dream about Gabriel Heater. <laughs> Just forget it, dear. No, oh, I'm worried. It's embarrassing for a married woman to have this happen to her. It was just a dream. But I don't want to dream about men. I just want to dream about you. <laughs> Thanks, dear. Come in. Oh, hello, Bill. Gracie. Say, how did you manage to get Francho Tone's apartment? Oh, I managed it, Bill, but I'm I'm almost sorry I did. Why? Well, I dream all night long that George is Francho Tone. Well, you don't have to stay here during the day. <laughs> ah, yes. Funny, uh, Billy. Bill, I won't get any sympathy from you. I can see that. Oh, sure you will, Gracie. I know how upsetting dreams can be. Gosh, I dreamed last night that Lana Turner, Paulette Goddard, and Betty Grable came to my hotel room and grabbed me and just started to kiss me and kiss me and kiss me. It was horrible. <laughs> worried about my dreams. I guess there's only way for me to, one way for me to stop dreaming about Francho Tone. What's that? Well, I'll have to stay awake. Well, okay. Bill and I will go down and get you some black coffee. All right, dear. Well, I'm just going to sit down here and concentrate on staying awake. What should I dream about Francho Tone anyway? True, Francho Tone's got broad shoulders, but so has George got broad... Uh-huh. True, uh... <laughs> Francho Tone's got a, a big chest, but so has George got a... Oh, maybe I should start at the other end. <laughs> anyway, I won't dream about him anymore because I won't go to sleep. Well, hello. Well, what do you know? I did go to sleep. I beg your pardon? You got back sooner than I expected, darling. Well, I didn't go to Chicago yet. Darling? Did you call me Darling? Well, do you know of any reason why I shouldn't call you darling? Well, that's what bothers me. There's probably every reason why you should. <laughs> I should say so. I'm your wife. My what? Your wife. You... You mean you and I got married? Well, certainly. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have had that second martini last night. <laughs> Look, honey, which one of the Vogelmeyers are you? Vogelmeyer? Yeah, I'll start the annulment proceeding. You will not, not after I've been married to you for ten years. Ten... Ten years? Well, really, dear, you needn't act so surprised. Do you mind if I ask you a rather personal question? Oh, of course not. What is it? Do we have any children? Oh, well, now this is getting pretty silly, even for a dream. I wish I knew what's come over you, George. George? My name isn't George, it's Francho. Francho Tone. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Yeah, but it is. <laughs> I'm Francho Tone. Look, you think you're Francho Tone, and I think you're Francho Tone, but you happen to be George Burns. And as soon as I wake up, you'll get your old face back. <laughs> look, look, lady, I'm, I'm a little confused. Well, Gracie, I got the cook. Oh. Oh, come in. We were just talking about you, Francho. <laughs> Francho? Oh, no, Gracie, I'm George. He's Francho. Look, mister, can you tell me what's going on here? Oh, sure, it's very simple, Mr. Tone. You see, when my wife falls asleep, she dreams that you're me and I'm you. But when she's awake, I'm me and you're you. But right now, she thinks she's asleep, so I'm you and you're me. But actually, you're you and I'm me. <laughs> Which one of the Vogelmeyers did you marry like <laughs> I know it sounds, con uh, it sounds confusing, but all we have to do is convince her that she's awake. You're awake, lady. Honest, you are wide awake. Really? Would you pinch me to make sure? Why, of course. Ouch. There you are. Well, oh, gee, you pinch kind of cute. I do, huh? Uh-huh. It's obvious the 
that you're not my husband. Of course he isn't your husband, Gracie. Doesn't it come back to you now? You sent me out for black coffee to keep you awake, and here it is. Oh, yes, I remember now. When I'm awake, you're my husband. That's right. And when I'm asleep, you're my husband. That's right. George. Why? You drink the coffee. I do. George and Gracie. Well, Gracie, next week we'll be selling bonds in Philadelphia, and the guest star will be one of the world's greatest pianists. Oh, George, you shouldn't think of me as the guest. Not you, Gracie. Jose Aturbe. You're, uh, you're hardly in his class. Well, according to Sir Albert Coates, the great conductor, I'm better than Aturbe. Coates thinks you're better? Well, certainly. We both played with Mr. Coates, and when I finished, he kissed me, and he didn't, he didn't kiss, kiss Jose Aturbe. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.